Welcome to Abundant Life Sanctuary live stream Sunday morning. Do you know what today is? Today is the day that the Lord has made. The Bible says, let us rejoice and be glad. In fact, the psalmist says, I will rejoice. Sometimes we have to will ourselves to rejoice. We welcome uh, those friends, families, guests that are with us today. We are so glad you joined us for live streaming here at Abundant Life Sanctuary. It may look a little different today. Church is in a different place. Uh, it wasn't until about six o'clock last night we found out uh, due to some of our mandatory stay-at-home orders and attempting to comply with that, that we would be having church from right here, uh, Pleasant Hill, um, right here in the media room. So welcome. We are so glad you're here. Uh, as always, we want to begin with prayer and ask God to be with us, ask his favor and grace, ask him to open our understanding to Revelation. I really feel like this is a word for our church specifically today, but also for those that are out there watching us. Maybe you just stumbled across this stream and uh, we don't believe in any just accidents. We believe there are appointments with God. So welcome uh, to the house of the Lord. The Bible says we're two or three gathered in his midst. There he is in the midst of them. Let's begin with prayer. Uh, we're remembering not only our nation and the world, but many persons who are right here uh, in our city, in our church, that are uh, in need of prayer today. Some are quarantined. Some are just needing strength and hope. Some are in need of healing today. We want to continue to remember those, the families who lost loved ones this week. We want to remember them and ask God to comfort them. Would you join with me? Heavenly Father, we love you. Thank you for the opportunity to be here in your presence. We're not separated today in spirit, for we are here in your name. When we call on your name, when we elevate you, when we praise you, we know you're in the midst of us. Be here in this house. Be there at that house today. Let the Holy Ghost come. Let your word not return void, but let it accomplish its purpose and prosper in the thing where to it is sent. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Uh, we continue in prayer for our country. We continue in uh, hopes that all things, and we, in fact, we more than hope, we know that all things work together for good to those who love God and are the call according to his purpose. Um, if you uh, were watching, you know there's several ways to participate in giving. At the Mundle Life Sanctuary, if you're a member of another church, we invite you to uh, support that church. And uh, feel free to watch today if uh, you're so led to do that. We love you very, very much. I want to share the Word of God. Before we do, let me just bring uh, a couple of brief uh, tag-ons to the announcements that you saw earlier. Uh, I'm looking forward to getting my T-shirt. And there's no life like abundant life. And I want to share that message to the world. So we're going to get online this week and buy one of those t-shirts. Also, you know, Give God This Day uh, has just got, gotten kicked off last week. Uh, we're in the thick of things. And I just want to share a quick uh, testimony with you. Uh, a family this week gave their offering uh, to Give God This Day. Um, and immediately, within uh, a, probably a two-hour time frame, uh, they were blessed with a financial blessing 10 times what was given in the offering. And I just think that's pretty incredible. You're going to hear testimonies coming. Uh, one of the testimonies is about years ago, a lady uh, actually gave what she wanted to give and make on her job. She gave commensurate to that. And as a result, God blessed her with the jo her job raise, promotion, um, and allowed God to use her to be a blessing to the kingdom. And you can't outgive God. He said, try me, prove me. See if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, which you shall not have room enough to receive it. Well, if you're ready for the word, we're ready this morning to share it together. Uh, we're going to go to Psalms, the 51st chapter, Psalms. 51. It is a psalm of David. We're going to go to the 10th verse and read down through 15. And it says this, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right
right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Verse 12 says, restore unto me the joy. Restore. Restore leads us to know that David one time had joy and he lost it. The only way you can restore something is if you one time had it. And the good news to this verse is he got it back. If you are out there today and you feel joy, peace, hope, sagging, not where it was, flagging, I want to tell you that you can be restored in your joy. It said, Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God, thou God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness. Lord, open thou my lips, and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. We've been talking for several weeks now about going back to basics. The basics of our relationship with God for the first eight weeks Last week, we just switched over to the basics of our relationship with our fellow man. We found out we love God as or in proportion to how we love ourselves. So self-care is important. We looked also at this graphic of um, uh, last week. We, we took a look at this safety card from an airplane safety manual. I hope you can read that. Uh, let me read it for you. It says, place oxygen mask on yourself first before helping small children or others who may need assistance. That's taken directly from the safety card on the airplane. Uh, the airline industry teaches that it's imperative that caregivers first put on their own oxygen mask before they try to help somebody else. Uh, in these days, in these days we are living even in these present weeks, it's important that we understand that we have to have the joy of our salvation. As David said, restore unto me the joy, and then will I teach transgressors thy ways. The Bible tells us in the last days knowledge would be increased, Men would be running to and fro. Men's hearts would be failing them for fear. It's interesting that all that goes together. We see that we're drowning in information. We are overwhelmed by information and we're starving for a God revelation. We're starving for that wisdom and understanding that comes only from the presence of God. It's possible to even be in church and like a starving man on a street corner, be tearing out, as it were, pages in the Bible, handing it to people as they come by, saying this is uh, good advice, this is a good thing. We're handing out theology, we're handing out platitudes, we're handing out religious experiences, but yet ourselves, it's possible to know the book, to share the book, but not be intimate with the author of the book. If there's anything I can do today as we continue to talk about loving ourselves as we love others, the secret, the secret to loving others really is loving ourselves. And so this is the second week we've taken time out to talk about that. My prayer today is instead of tearing out pages in the book and handing it to other people, we could somehow take that precious word of God. He said, in the beginning was the word, and the word was God, and the word was made flesh. We actually take that word and press it to our chest, and we hold tightly to that, and we ask and say, God, I need you. I need you first before I can be what I need to be to my family. I need you before I can be what I need to be to my neighbors, I have got to have you. It's not my mother, it's not my father, but it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. I want to quote it again because it's so pertinent to where we're at. In Second Chronicles 7 and 13, the setting was, Solomon said, if there is a pestilence in the land, if my people, not those out there, not the wayward, not those that are AWOL, 
God said, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from every wicked way, revival's coming. I'll heal their land. I'll forgive their sins. It's the personal revival that gave way to a corporate revival. The kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but it's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. And that's why David cried out. You, you can hear his desperation as he cries out to God and says, Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. David knew what it was to be in the presence of God. He knew what it was to experience the power and the thrill and the rapture of praise because God inhabits the praises of his people. He lived with David. But when David was separated from God by his sin, something happened and he suddenly felt that distant, cold, empty feeling of knowing that he had somehow been separated from his source. And so a Holy Ghost revival always needs to start with a personal revival. Before we can heal our nation, before we can heal our land, we must first ourselves find healing. It's healed people that heal other people. It's whole people who make others whole. It's loved people who love others. And Jesus said the first and greatest commandment is you love the Lord God with all thy heart, mind, soul, and strength. And the second is namely unto this, that they, you love your neighbor as yourself. It's beautiful that sandwiched between loving God and loving others is that little secret. It's the secret of truly loving others and it's loving ourselves. It's only in his presence that we truly have that direction and understanding. And it is in his presence we will find wholeness and healing through every circumstance of life. In Psalms 147 and 3, it says he heals the brokenhearted and he binds up their wounds. Evidently, there's wounds that happen on the outside, but there's a brokenness that happens on the inside. And many times we deal with the exterior of the man, but rarely do we deal with the interior recesses of the man. Psalm says, who forgives, 103 and 3, forgives all your iniquity and heals all your diseases. Peter, 1 Peter 2 and 24, he himself bore our sins in his body on the tree that we might die to sin and live to righteousness by his wounds. And Peter puts it in the past tense, you have been healed. God has a beautiful place of healing reserved for all of us if we can find that place of healing. I mentioned to you last week a book by David Siemens that was so helpful to me during one of the greatest crises of my life, one of the greatest woundings of my life. And I began to search on the inside. I was praying, I was praying hours per day. And yet there was still a place in me that felt like needed understanding and revelation. And God helped me to find this particular book. And in it, he shares as a pastor what he came to in a way of a revelation of how to heal his congregation. He says, one Sunday morning in 1966, I preached a sermon called The Holy Spirit and the Healing of Our Damaged Emotions. It was my first venture into this area and I was convinced that God had given me that message or I would never have had the courage to preach it. What I said that evening about the healing of memories and damaged emotions is now old news. People all over are teaching that today, but it wasn't old then. When I got up to preach, I looked down at the congregation, I saw dear Dr. Smith. Now, Dr. Smith had been a very real part of my boyhood. When my wife Helen and I first heard that we were appointed to our present church and pastorate, a few elderly faces appeared in our minds to worry us. One of those faces was that of the former pastor or former minister there, Dr. Smith. For I wondered how I could ever minister to him. He had nearly scared the life out of me with his preaching when I was young and I was still uneasy in his presence. 
When I saw him in the congregation that evening, my heart sank. But I went ahead and preached the message that I felt God had given me. After the service, which was followed by a very wonderful time in the altars, Dr. Smith remained seated in the congregation. Finally, he came up to the altar, and in his gruff way, he said, David, may I see you in your office? The author says, all those images that I had as a boy, as if I was Moses on Mount Sinai, quaking before the wrath of God, he said, I, I came and followed him to my office, and I sat down. And very kindly, however, Dr. Smith said to me, I've never heard a sermon quite like that before, but I want to tell you something. As he began to talk, the old man's eyes began to tear up, and he said, you know, there's always been a group of people I never could help. They were sincere people. I, I believe many of them were spirit-filled Christians, but they had problems. They, they brought these things to me, and I tried to help, but no amount of advice, no amount of scripture or prayer on their part ever seemed to bring them lasting deliverance or change in their lives. Then he said, I always felt guilty in my ministry, but I think what you preached this morning, I think you're on to something. In fact, I want to encourage you, don't stop. Keep preaching what you're preaching, for I believe you have found the answer. Many times it is the emotions of man that locks out the Spirit of God. And many times if we can find a way to open ourselves to the healing that God offers, not just physical healing, not just salvation, but emotional healing for our spirits. It unlocks a personal revival, and we experience, like David experienced, a restoration of our joy. How do I know it's the will of God? Matthew 8 and 17 says, He himself took our infirmities. Even the Apostle Paul ran up against some things. In one place he said, I despaired from my own life. It was the weights and the worries, despite Paul's incredible revelation and his experience with God on the roadside that day. There were some things in his life that God still allowed him to struggle with and Paul had to find his own way. I think you can hear the echoes of that in this verse. It says, likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. Infirmities encompasses not just our physical maladies, but our emotional issues that we come to God with. Well, we know not what to pray as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us according to the will of God. There's an old song we used to sing that said, in his presence there is fullness of joy, and at his right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Oh, what fellowship divine to know that I am his and he is mine. When I'm confident of his love for me, when I'm confident that I am able to love myself, there's something that happens and it's an outgrowth, it's a testimony. We become epistles seen and read of all men. And there's something about when you spend time with Jesus, there's something about when you've been in his presence and like Paul, you allow him to heal those infirmities. It makes us a better person. It makes us a better witness. It makes us a more adequate Christian in this world. For Jesus said, by this shall all men know you are my disciples if you have love one for another. There's something about when you really love him, you grow more like him. You think like him. You react like him, you give like him, and you allow yourself to love like him. When you're in his presence, the, the door of opportunity opens to healing. It opens in our lives, and healed people heal other people. So my advice today to you is that of the old pastor, that you work on it, you develop it, you let God lead you down the path to healing. Proverbs says counsel is like deep water in the heart of a man. And a man of understanding, remember earlier, we're drowning in inf information. We're starving for understanding, self-understanding, understanding of God, his will, his working in our lives.
but a man of understanding will draw it out. It's interesting that David said, Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward part, where nobody can see the deep recesses of my heart. James stumbled on something when he said, Confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. It's very important your confidant is caring and your confidant is confidential and you can come to him and find counsel in his presence. If you've not yet mustered up the courage to talk to a spouse or a pastor or a counselor, I want to encourage you today to go to the wonderful counselor where Isaiah said his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, the King eternally. It's all about knowing him. It allows us to love ourselves and love others. It's the secret to loving others. For if our heart condemn us, John said, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then we have confidence. There's a confidence that comes when we're healed, free of condemnation, free of guilt, free of old past wounds and hurts, and God uses us as a conduit to heal others. Paul said we comfort others with the same comfort wherein we we're comforted. Love God, love people. And sandwiched right between that is the ability for us to accept restoration and healing and hand that to our fellow man. We love you today. It, it is uh, so important that you understand that we're here for you. We want our the best for you and God's will and working in your life. Right now, I want to pray for you. And then we'll close this evening in song. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, I love you. You said you had given us the tongue of a lover to speak a word in season to him that is weary. I just pray for everybody listening tonight. I pray the hand of God would be there. I pray you would bring peace. I pray, pray you would bring joy, that you would restore unto them the joy of your salvation, that you would uphold them with your righteous right hand, and then we will all have a revival and we will teach transgressors your ways and sinners will be converted unto you. I pray you would bind up the brokenhearted, heal their wounds, give beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, and the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise God. Right there in your homes as we close today, I wish you would just say amen. Amen. Even so be it. Last chapter, last verse, last word, last sentence in the Bible is amen. Even so be it, there's something happens when you say, God, not my mother, not my father, but me standing in the need of prayer. Our prayer today is that you would feel the presence of God in a very, very real way. I pray that his presence would come right where you are. Sing along with us. You know the words to this song. Just allow your presence to melt with his as we come together in the presence of God today. What a joy it is. What a privilege it is. If my people.
of God go with you, continue to be with you. Let his face shine upon you. Be blessed in the city. Be blessed in the field. Be blessed when you come. Be blessed when you go. Don't forget tonight at 6.30. Tonight at 6.30 uh, tune back in. We're going to hear from First Lady Emeritus. She's not only got some music, she has a word from the Lord for us about Selah. God bless you. Carry on. Like, share. Invite a neighbor, invite a friend to be with us. We're looking forward to greater things ahead. All things work together. Lord bless Love you. God bless you.